StarCraft. It's easily one of the most talked about, played, shared, and beloved games of the late 90s. It was the era when classic PC isometric action, role-playing, and real-time strategy games dominated the market. Some of those games haven't aged well, either killed off by genre evolution or by sticking too fiercely to tradition. Times, they are a-changing, and I believe StarCraft II might be one of those games that fell into the latter category. On today's episode of Did It Fail, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to tell you my personal story of StarCraft as a longtime fan. We'll look at what made the original StarCraft so successful and good, and then we'll turn our attention to what I believe to be the cause for the somewhat disappointing StarCraft II, both in the eSports arena and as a standalone sequel. This is my personal take on the StarCraft franchise. What the hell happened to StarCraft? Yeah, StarCraft from 1998. You ask any serious strategy gamer or veteran gamer out there, during that time, what was StarCraft? They definitely knew what that game was. In fact, you know what? This game was probably the best strategy game to be released up until this point, only to be surmounted by probably Warcraft 3 a few years later. The PC strategy game market was super hyper competitive during this time with StarCraft. You got Warcraft, you got the Command & Conquer franchise, you got so many other games jumping into that pool as well. But I think StarCraft stood above the rest. StarCraft was developed by Blizzard, one of the most iconic video game makers today and in the past. They have made some incredible games, but StarCraft was definitely at the helm for such a long time. But ask the question, what the hell has happened to this once iconic franchise? You gotta remember, Back in the 90s and the early 2000s, gaming was such a different place. We were playing basically on dial-up modems for God's sakes. We had ass-end PC connections, but the games themselves were a very special breed. These games back then, including StarCraft, including Warcraft, most of the Blizzard games, including Diablo as well, they were some of the most amazing experiences because they were so unique. Every single Blizzard game has really special elements about it, but StarCraft was in a league of its own during the time. It had an amazing single player campaign with full motion graphic cutscenes, it had fantastic writing, a lot of exposition, then you throw on top of Battle.net and the multiplayer, but then you throw on top once again the use map settings maps. There was just a ton of stuff to do in StarCraft. I fondly remember playing with some of my friends basically into the wee hours of the night, playing 3v3 Big Game Hunter. Yep, I said it. 3v3 BGH all night long. BGH was probably the most iconic custom game mode in StarCraft for Battle.net because it was simply amazing. For you scrubs out there who don't remember, basically you start off with unlimited resources and a ton of SUVs. There's no rush 20 usually if people agree to it. And you basically build up an entire army, unit capped to 200 over 200, and then it's basically all at war. You got the Zerg, you got the Protoss, you got the Terrans, just fighting out in these gigantic battles. And the endless possibilities of these battles made sure that repetition was never an issue. You might go all out air with your team and do like a Arbiter, Carrier, Battle Cruiser composition or something like that. Super deadly, especially if the enemy team doesn't have defenses. Or you might just go super defensive like tanks and then get some Dragoons to back you up and then have some Psionic Storms in the back as well. There was just endless possibilities. Super fun game mode and representative of a giant feature in the game which was Use Map Settings. Use Map Settings was a mode where players could make their own game modes such as RPGs, Big Game Hunters, you could do kind of uh, storytelling, adventure modes. There's a ton of stuff available and there was during the best years of StarCraft. But I think most people will remember StarCraft by its heavy competitive scene, driven of course by the Koreans. StarCraft was a huge game overseas and it basically spawned a job type in Korea where players could actually be professional StarCraft players and actually make a living doing it. The scene was so big that it transcended some of the biggest games on the planet at the time and the StarCraft esports numbers were nothing to sniff at. This game was incredibly popular both in Korea and in the domestic markets. StarCraft was one of the most watched esports games on the planet and it never died down because of how serious 
the loyal veteran StarCraft players were about the game. People love this game for its complexity, for its depth, for its absolute perfect balance, some would argue, between the three races of the game. The thing I love about StarCraft, and what I love about watching the original StarCraft, is that anybody could beat anybody. Yes, there were some imbalances here or there, but they were basically things that players accepted and kind of look fondly back on right now. But by and by large, balance in this game was as good as it gets in a competitive AAA strategy game, and that's something that is not easy to achieve. And that's because StarCraft was built as a counterplay style game, so every unit has a counter. So depending on what your opposition is building, you can build counter units to them to get advantages on the battlefield. The beauty of StarCraft is, depending on how much map awareness you had or how much scouting you did, you had more information or less information than your opponent. So it was basically this hugely competitive, extremely strategic game that rewarded efficiency, APM, mental strategy, map awareness. There are so many things that go into the mind of a StarCraft veteran. You can see it on their faces when they're playing a really high level match. So for a long time, StarCraft was the game to watch and to play. So I asked the question, what the hell has happened to StarCraft? When StarCraft 2 came out, I think a lot of people were really confused because what we got was an extremely polished, well-made AAA strategy game from Blizzard. So why has the StarCraft 2 esports scene just basically gone down the toilet? Why has there never been as much viewership as StarCraft 1? And why can't StarCraft 2 seem to compete with other games on the market? It's such a weird question to ask because StarCraft was such a hugely popular game, so StarCraft 2 was looked at to be an obvious success, both in terms of sales, player counts, and of course, eSports viewership. StarCraft 2 was never popular on Twitch. Why is this the case? And it's so ironic because Blizzard tried so hard to push the StarCraft 2 esports scene early on and for such a long period of time. They put in so much money, they televised so many broadcasts, they had so many sponsors, they paid so much money out in prize pools. Why did this game just not succeed? Not only is StarCraft 2 basically not even relevant anymore in the esports scene, or at least not as relevant as it should be based off the success of StarCraft 1, but it's also really not talked about in the gaming world at all. I don't see that many people out there talking about StarCraft 2. I don't see the excitement for this game, period. The StarCraft 2 Reddit is not exactly popular. Their forums don't exactly have a lot of activity compared to some of the other big games out there. So what the hell has happened? As a StarCraft veteran, I think it's important to look at basically the journey of StarCraft and StarCraft 2 from the eyes of both the competitive scene and from the average gamer, because it's two different perspectives. The competitive side and the lack of eSports success has an easier explanation, I think, because it's basically the fact that StarCraft veterans would prefer to play StarCraft 1. It's that simple. Most StarCraft veterans have been put on record saying that StarCraft 1 was basically as good as it got. That the game was so balanced and fair for the competitive scene that there was no reason to move on to another game. So StarCraft Pro players out there, even when StarCraft 2 came out, were playing StarCraft 1. And that is the fundamental reason that the StarCraft Remastered version was created. Blizzard knew that Korean StarCraft Pro players didn't want to move on to StarCraft 2, that they would rather play StarCraft 1, so they made the Remastered version so it could be better played in Korea. Many of those players that did switch over to StarCraft 2 said that the only reason they did so was because playing StarCraft 2 made them more money competitively. So what I'm trying to say is that StarCraft 2 really never took off in Korea, which is the biggest market for StarCraft revenue, income, and players in the entire world. And the fact that they have the most skilled players that are the most fun to watch and they're not playing StarCraft 2 has made the esports scene in the Western markets for StarCraft 2 not the most exciting to watch. So there is the pro player side. That's pretty easy to figure out. The other issue in question is what happened to StarCraft for the common gamer? And I think the easiest way to look at it is that StarCraft 2, as a video game, did not do enough. I know that StarCraft 2 is an incredibly polished and fun AAA strategy game, but you have to think about what the sequel did in terms of innovating new concepts in the strategy market. 
For every single person out there that was not a professional player that did play StarCraft 1, what did they want from StarCraft 2? They probably wanted a mixture of familiarity and new concepts and new mechanics. But unfortunately, let's just be honest here. StarCraft 2 didn't really do anything new. It really didn't do anything new. StarCraft 2 is basically StarCraft 1 with a few more units and a few more tile sets. That's about it. I'm not saying it's a bad game. In fact, it's a good game, just for the record. But what I'm saying is, it's not a new style of video game. There's simply not enough new introduced to make it really interesting and fun for people who already know what the StarCraft formula is. RTS games are awesome. They're not stuck in the past. They're totally playable today. So long as you do new stuff with old templates to make it new and refreshing. I don't think StarCraft 2 actually did that. One of my biggest qualms with StarCraft 2 was the lack of both features, mechanics that were new, and a new race. I simply could not believe that they did not introduce a new race in StarCraft 2. It's still Protoss, Terran, and Zerg, with the same base units from the same original game, just adding in a few more. That's all they did. There's literally like three to four new units per race, and that is it. They tweak some numbers, they changed some of the fundamental mechanics of prior units like siege tanks, they made the game look better, but that's about it. We're talking about a sequel that came out 12 years after the first game. I mean, you have to innovate more than this. I'm not saying it's a bad game, it's extremely polished, it's pretty balanced, but it's not new. This is the reason why I don't play StarCraft 2. I didn't play StarCraft 2 for more than about a month because it just felt like StarCraft 1. And the fact that you had to buy the game three different times to play the full campaign was a huge deal breaker for me too. I felt kind of taken advantage of to be honest. Yeah, we got three times the campaign, but we also paid up the ass for it, so I don't see a justification in that regard whatsoever. You think about the evolution from Warcraft 2 to Warcraft 3. That game changed fundamentally to the core by adding hero units and a PvE style questing system. It was a completely different game and people absolutely loved it because it was both reminiscent of the past and a huge step forward in introducing new gameplay mechanics and features to make it its own game. I didn't feel that way with StarCraft 2. I wanted to. I appreciated what it was, but as a sequel and a new video game, it just did not live up to expectations. It could have been so much more. It could have taken the StarCraft templates and added so many different things to it, but what it did was basically recycle StarCraft to make it look better and basically add a few bells and whistles and a few more units. Is that really enough in 2012 and onwards to be competitive in the esports markets and for common gamers out there who already have experienced the original StarCraft? I feel so sad making this video because StarCraft 1 was one of my favorite games of all time and I have so many excellent memories, went on so many adventures with my friends, played so many games of StarCraft back in the day and I wanted StarCraft 2 to be that next big game for me that I would dive in and just get lost in its world and I didn't and I feel really really bad about that because I feel like the game really deserved so much more innovation than it got. I feel like Blizzard was in this really, really weird spot, this rock in a hard place, where they didn't want to piss anyone off by changing the game too much, but what happened was they didn't change the game enough. And that's what I wanted from StarCraft 2. The feeling of StarCraft, but taken to the next level. And for me, it just was not that game. StarCraft 2 for me is always going to be that game I look back on and think, you know what, what could this game have really been? It's a solid game, it does a lot right, but at the core, at the heart, I don't feel like this is the next level of StarCraft. Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. If you have an opinion on StarCraft 2, please do so and leave it down below in the comment section. And you guys have a fantastic day. Peace, love, and happiness out there. Until then, you guys take care.